It's time to stay awake Watching o'er the sea For we don't know what lies ahead Tempest or storm My duty is to warn For safety for the lives of men Watching how y'all doing? If you take your Bibles and you turn to 2 Timothy, I want to talk to you this morning about patience and wholeness and how the two work together. Most Christians will agree that in order to achieve wholeness, they need God's help. However, the journey can become complicated when we confuse what is God's work and what is our work. Second Timothy is such a tremendous truth we need to understand as Christians if we're going to be successful in reaching the goal of wholeness of any area of our life. In Second Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, Paul writing to Timothy, who was a young minister, coming into a job that is a very difficult job for any minister. And that's the transition of the church and to be laid upon a young man's shoulders to go on and carry on the work that has been set before you. Verse 1 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Paul could have told Timothy a lot of things to be strong in, but he said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier, to be a soldier. The word hardness in verse 3 means to suffer, to endure, to endure evil, to endure troubles. It means to be afflicted. So Paul is telling Timothy that he's going to come across times in life when he's going to have trouble. He's going to be afflicted. He's going to have to endure hardness. This word, hardness, is in the imperative mood in the Greek. And the imperative mood corresponds to the English imperative. And it expresses a command to the hearers, to the hearer, to perform a certain action by the order and authority of the one commanding. So literally, God, by way of the Apostle Paul, is telling Timothy, endure hardness. He's not asking him. He's telling him, you need to endure hardness. That's how it would translate if I was to say it. The word soldier used in verse 3 means exactly that. It means to be a soldier. Strong's also says it means to be a legionnaire. And that was a position in the Roman army. Verse 4 contains the analogy with the word warreth. And it continues through. And the word warreth, where it says, No man that warreth entangled himself. The word warth means to make a military expedition, to lead soldiers into a war or to a battle. It's spoken of a commander, how a commander is supposed to lead his men into a battle. So you see it's hardness, it's soldier, it's fighting, it's a battle. It means to be on active service, to be on active service. The point that God is trying to make is that you're involved in a spiritual war. That's why we entitle it spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, 
be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Devour. The word devour from the Greek means to destroy. It means to swallow up. Understand? And God is showing you what the devil wants to do to you. Okay? He doesn't want to play hoops in an athletic competition and whoever gets to pig first wins the game. See? You really do a great disservice to the Word of God and to your mind and conditioning of your mind itself if you think that you are only a spiritual athlete. Because spiritual athletes don't get shot in the head and their brains splattered on the walls. Spiritual athletes don't have to disarm bombs and get blown up. Spiritual athletes don't have to get stabbed. Don't get taken as a prisoner of war. Don't get beat. You understand? Spiritual athletes get applauded. They get a hot dog at halftime. And if they lose the game, they walk home. It. A soldier, however, doesn't have that luxury. And God wants you to understand that you're in a spiritual war. It doesn't say that beware of your adversary, the referee who walketh around looking to point two points against you. It says, beware of your adversary, the devil, as a what? Do you ever see what a roaring lion does? You want to get in a cage with a roaring lion, especially one that's hungry? See, God could have said anything, but he chose to describe to you what the devil's like. And if you don't know what the devil's like, you don't know who you're fighting. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. It doesn't say to win the competition. It says to destroy. Luke 22 verse 31 says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he could play a game of 21 with you. It doesn't say that. It says that he may sift you as wheat. The word sift comes from the Greek word that means to shake in a sieve. Do you ever see um, that powdered sugar? You put it in a sprinkler and you go like this over a funnel cake. That's what it is, to shake. It actually means to shake violently by agitation. To shake one's faith to the verge of overthrowing it. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to pressure you, shake you, agitate you, attack you so violently that he wants your faith to be overthrown. And people don't understand the reality of spiritual warfare. And for a minister, it's imperative for him to understand or he will be taken out. It's just that simple. He will be taken out. Paul knew this going into the ministry. In Acts chapter 9 verse 16, the revelation to Ananias was, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake. For my namesake. You see? It's talking about the way you have to prepare your heart and mind to engage in a spiritual battle. That's why he uses all of these different words. You cannot approach living your life for God and doing battle with the devil like you approach a basketball game or a football game. People don't die in basketball games. Do you understand? People don't die in baseball games. But the devil steals, kills, and what? He destroys. He destroys. Second Timothy, back there again in verse 8. It says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And because I preached the resurrection, 
Remember that Jesus Christ, the deceit of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. That's what Paul said because I preach that. That's my gospel. I'm preaching about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I suffer trouble. Verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble. Why was he suffering trouble? Because he was talking about Jesus Christ. He was talking about the resurrection of the dead. You see, people all day long talk about God and nobody says nothing. But if you mention the word Jesus Christ, that's when you get in trouble. And they don't like it. You know why? Because if Jesus Christ is the only name that can get you to God. Jesus Christ is the only name that can save you. Jesus Christ is the only one. So the devil doesn't like his name and he doesn't want his name mentioned. You could say God all you want. But don't say Jesus Christ because that upsets people. Paul said, I suffer trouble as an evildoer. What do you think about that? They were accusing him of being evil because he was speaking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You think anything less is going to be said about you? You think this cancel culture is going to be any kinder to you if you mention the word Jesus Christ? They want to intimidate you? Even unto bonds. They throw them in jail. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that I may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Verse 10 says, therefore I endure. I endure. The word endure in verse 10 is the Greek word huponeo. Huponeo. Here it's a verb, and it means to remain, to persevere under misfortunes and trials. It means to hold fast unto one's faith. He endured all this trouble. To bear up bravely and calmly, bravely and calmly under ill treatments. Verse 11 says, It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Okay? There has to be a death before there's a life. If we suffer, for verse 12, we shall also reign. See? There has to be a crown of thorns before there's a crown of glory. If we deny him, he also will deny us that's talking about in rewards. If we suffer, if we suffer, again the word suffer is hupo-eo, hupo -eo. Same word that's used and it's translated endured in verse 10. Therefore, I endure hupo-eo. Here in verse 12, hupo epo is translated by the English word suffer. Same Greek word, two different English words. Here, God tells us that we need to persevere under pressure. That we need to remain faithful when pressure strikes. That we endure bravely. That we don't back down when pressure comes. We don't run. In other words, we remain steadfast. When it comes to pain and suffering, people usually seek the fastest way out of pain and suffering. Let's take a dog. Let's put some A1 on your thigh, and we'll put you in the cage with the dog, and he... Now, who would enjoy that? The dog. The dog. <laughs> You want to get out of that pain as quickly as possible, right? That's, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. No one wants to suffer longer than they need to. Pain demands immediate attention. And this is where the believers miss the boat many times in life. Our natural default mechanism is to avoid, remove, or deal with the pain as soon as we can. Something comes up in your life that's uncomfortable, it's troubling, it's causing you pain either 
emotionally or physically. Nobody likes to be in that state of mind. I want to get rid of it. I want to avoid it. I want to do whatever I have to do. We live in an I want it yesterday world. Everything is now. We want it now and we don't have time to wait. We want fast food, fast internet, fast cars. We want to be able to pay fast. We want fast everything. Except for slim fast, if you're me. <laughs> We're accustomed to getting things fast. So when it comes to pain and suffering, we want it gone, and we want it gone fast. However, if this is always our first choice without conferring to the Father, it could be the wrong choice. Now go to Luke chapter 21. Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you that God sends you pain and suffering. What I'm telling you is that in your pain and suffering, God works. Luke 21, verse 19. The Bible says, In your patience possess ye your souls. The word patience from the Greek is the word hupomone. Hupomone. And here, it's from the same word family, but only it's a noun. It's a noun. The Revised Standard Translation of Luke 21, 19 reads, By your endurance, by your hupomone, by your patience, you will gain your lives. You will gain your lives. So what God is showing us here is that there is a need for us to be patient and endure when we're in situations in life. And that very patience and endurance, that godly endurance that we exercise will bring us to the victory. You don't quit, in other words. Look at Romans chapter 5, please. Romans 5. And what, if anything, I can do for you today is to give you an understanding and to change your perspective on the different problems and tribulations and trials that you go through in life. In Romans 5 verse 3, it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Now watch it. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, again it's hupomone, experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Given unto us. Patience, hupomone, works experience, and experience to hope, and hope that God loves us and fixes things. It's shed abroad in our heart. And it's the domino effect. You got to have the one, and then it falls and it hits the other, then it falls and it hits the other, and it falls and it hits the other, and here's the end result. Here's the end result. But here's our problem. We don't like pain and suffering. We don't like to be uncomfortable. So, when it says, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. Tribulations is the word thalipsis. It's a compression. It's a twisting. Somebody's got you and they're just doing this to your heart and your life. And so that produces patience. It works patience. Okay? I got to sit through this. I got to endure this. I got to bear up under this because I know at the end God's going to fix it. But your patience is going to be tested. And what most people do is that when that first tribulation 
hits patience, the domino, they never let patience go forward because they don't like the pain. They don't like how they're feeling. They don't like the pressure. So you know what they do? They grab hold of the patience and they pull it out. And they go about life doing something to relieve the pain. Instead of staying in the pain, letting the natural progression, the natural chain reaction, the set of dominoes go through to the end where God's waiting like this. But because they don't like the pain, they don't like the suffering, they feel uncomfortable, they say, I ain't putting up with this, I'm going to get a beer or a case of them. Or I'm going to go smoke some dope. Or I'm going to go hang out with my friends and watch the game. And then we're going to watch another game and another game. And I'm going to avoid this and I'm going to ignore it. And I'm going to lose myself in sports or something else. And what did they do? This is what they did. They interrupted the flow of God in their life. And they're never going to accomplish the result on the deliverance that God had available for them because... They were uncomfortable. They didn't like the pain. They didn't like the ridicule. They didn't like the insult. They didn't like to have themselves blasphemed and insulted so the whole world knows. So they say, I'm out of here. What would God have you do? Stay put. Did God bring that stuff on you? No. He said, stay put. Let me work. Give me a chance to get in there. Exit stage right, as Snagglepuss would say. I'm out of here. Look, Genesis 3.15 says that I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. You're going to have tribulation and problems in life because it's bruising your head. You understand? The devil will make sure of it. He's the God of this world. That's part of his job. He's going to throw stuff at you. And if you can't stand up under the pressure, you know what's going to happen? You're going to rob yourself of the blessing. Because you will never experience God in your life and the closeness of God and the deliverance of God. Let me tell you something. There was a time where the devil did everything he could to scare me away from ministering to a person. Everything he could. And I went through a week of hell because I made an appointment. It took a week. I went through a week of hell with my wife. Not because of her, but with her, both of us. And he wanted me to quit. He wanted me to pick up the phone and cancel the appointment. He wanted me to reschedule. He wanted me to provoke them so they could get cocky and sarcastic with me and I could say, nah, you don't talk to me that way, but it was all facade because I was afraid. I had to suffer through that week and at the end, the end of that week, those demons bowed to me in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no deliverance. You understand? If that... If I had not suffered through. And because of that, God was able to take me to a place, and it, a, a wonderful place, where my faith in Him grew, my trust in Him grew, and I never once ever suffered again when I met a demon. They shake now. Why is that? Because they didn't take the domino out. I saw it through. You understand? You don't see a resurrection unless there's a death. You don't see a healing unless there's a sickness. You don't see a financial blessing unless there's a financial need. But for those of you who have been in places where you've had a financial need or you've had someone that has had a financial need and you've told them to stand on the Word of God even though it sounded ridiculous... 
and you saw God come through and bless them, what did that do for that person and what did that do for you? Same with healing. See? But the devil wants to scare you away. He wants to tell you it's not going to work. Your God's not big enough. He's not faithful. He's going to turn his back on you. And he gets you afraid and you start to doubt and you start to worry and you start to fear. And fear produces unbelief. And the devil wins. All because you can't get past two crummy dominoes in your life. Now shame on you. Shame on us. Two dominoes. Some of us quit at the first one. Ooh, that looks like trouble down there. I'm going this way. See? But it's a trick. I'm telling you. You have to learn how to bear up under pressures of life. Look, instead of complaining about your life and the situation that you're in, why not give God glory that he has not left you alone and you will get to experience firsthand God's love, faithfulness, and his deliverance in your life. Because that's the two choices, people. And if you don't quit, you'll win. You already won. It's just a matter of manifesting it. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. We quit too soon. We give up too soon. We drug ourselves, we medicate ourselves, we go to our girlfriend, we go to our boyfriend, we talk about ourselves, we talk about the problem, we run away from it, we quit too soon. You know where you should be going your problem? To God. That's where you should be going. And rest in Him, knowing that He's faithful and He's going to be able to do what He said He's going to do. He's able and He's willing to accomplish that in your life. But he's not going to be able and willing to accomplish that in your life if he comes out one day and says, well, where's he go? He went that way. I'll go get him. Can't. Can't see hide or tail. I'm gone. Smoke. Why? Because he gave up. He quit. Too uncomfortable. Ew. I don't like this pain. I don't like this feeling. This can't be right. If it was God's will, I wouldn't be going through this. If it was God's will, it would be all lovey-dovey perfect. Yeah, Jesus said that, you know, when he was on the cross and in the garden. This can't be God's will. I didn't do nothing. Don't the devil play with your head that way? Well, if this, if this was God's will, it would be smooth. No bumps. Yeah, right. The devil's on a holiday, right? Hebrews chapter 10. You endure. You stay with it. You don't give up. Ever have a baby? Women? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You patiently endure. And then when you patiently endure, at the end of the day, what do you get? Not the mama. <laughs> you get this cute little thing, right? But before you get the baby, what do you got to do? Patiently endure. And you got to patiently endure your husband, too, if he's a numb nuts. <laughs> Doctor, please remove him from this room. <laughs> I was saying in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Great recompense reward. For you have need of hupomone. You have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the what? You know why a lot of people never get to the promise part? Because they don't have the patience part. They quit. I'm out of here. I look like a fool. My name is wrecked. This isn't fair. There's a ton, a ton of reasons. And they just quit. They go somewhere. They hide. They make a different name. They drug themselves. They medicate themselves. They do all kinds of things. Because they don't understand that if they would just stay put, God's coming. Hold the line. You know, you hear that? Hold the line. 
It may be two minutes. We can't hold the line for two minutes. You hold the line, I'll be there. And then God comes. And I want to know something here. God's never late. And God always comes. Because he's the God of patience. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with what? Patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of God. He didn't keep his eyes on the crown. He didn't keep his eyes on the thorns. He didn't keep his eyes on the beating. He kept his eyes a joy that was set before him. He kept his eyes on what God said was going to be the end result. See, he had patience. He endured the cross. <laughs> For consider him that endured. Here it's the verb again. Hupo mon eo. Hupo maneo. It's the vo verb. It's the same word family. He endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. Okay? What's the context? It's the crucifixion. What crucifixion are you going through right now that you can't bear up under? That God is waiting at the end to deliver you. See? You play them games. You go up one level, and then you go through a door, and you got to go up another level. And all along the levels, you got these little monsters trying to eat you. Why is it that you can play a video game and patiently endure all of them little monsters and get to the end, but when it comes to the video game of life, you quit as soon as the screen comes up and says Nintendo or whatever they say today? Right? It's going to happen, people. you got to change your mind, how you think about problems. See, <laughs> I fix things. That's what I do. I'm a fixer. I've made a living fixing things. And when I approach God's Word and things in God's Word, that's the mindset I approach it with. There is no tradesman out there that cannot be a great minister in the Word of God because he already knows how to fix things. He's a roofer, he's a plumber, he's an electrician. I don't care what you are. You just take that and apply it to the Word. You don't walk away and say, hey, this is a, forget it. <laughs> you need to get a new house. <laughs> just give me the deed to this one, <laughs> right? <laughs> You what? You fix the pipe. You fix the hole. You fix it. Same in life. With God, he's the great fixer. He, you can fix things if you don't run away. If you bear up under the pressure. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptations. Does it say count it joy and pray for temptations? No. It says when the opportunity arises, don't say, oh poop, me again, why me? You say, oh great, I can't wait to see what God's got up his sleeve and how he's going to get me out of this one. That's what it means, count it all joy. Change your perspective. Don't complain. It's a challenge for God. Knowing this, verse 3, that the trying of your faith worketh, what? Hupomone. Worketh patience. Worketh patience. Look, if your faith was never tried, you never would have to endure anything. You understand? But it doesn't stop there. And it says... Let patience, hupomone, let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and here wanting what? Nothing. Nothing. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work. Let 
patience have her perfect work. If you don't let patience have her perfect work, you're never going to get to the place where you're going to be perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. In other words, you're never going to get to the place of having your need met. You're never going to get to the place of wholeness. You're never going to get to the place of being delivered. Because you didn't let patience, hupomone, you didn't bear up under it, have her perfect work. Because you know what? It was too uncomfortable for you. I can't go through this. I can't put up with this. I can't take this. Keep on listening to that. The devil will talk you right out of it. You have need of what? Patience after that you have done the word of God so that you could receive the what? He'll talk you right out. You think he wants you to receive the promise? He's going to talk you, talk you right out of it. He's going to tell you how bad you are, how it's not going to work, how gloomy and doomy and boomy it looks. Just so you quit. Just so you quit. And when you quit, patience doesn't have her perfect work. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given. Now let me show you the whole context of it. Because we read this a billion times, but now I'm going to show you the context. But let him ask in what? Faith. Faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. We're talking about letting patience have her perfect work. Bear up under it. Stay put. Stay steadfast. Ask God. But if you're going to ask God, don't be flippy floppy about what you're asking God. Well, is that really God or is it really the devil? Is, it, is this really going to work? Is that really the promise of God? Was that really the voice of God that he spoke to me? Is that, oh, this is looking horrible. This... And you're like, what? Wavy, 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 wavy. Watch. Let not that man think he's going to receive anything of the Lord. You know why? Because he's not asking in faith. He's already wavering. Because the devil's whispering in this ear and God's telling him, no, don't waver, don't waver, stay put. Stay put. Spirits are going to fight against you. Turn, look me right in the eye and sort of said, I just want you to know that there's a general spirit in there and he told me to tell you they're going to fight against you. You bring Mr. General back next week and we'll see who wins the fight because I'm going to send him right to Jesus. That's what I said. Guess who won the fight? Jesus. Jesus. Wanted me to waver. You understand? Wanted me to waver. Here's the verse. A double-minded man is unstable in all his what? Ways. Right, what's the context? That patience have her perfect work. Stay put. Stand firm on the promise of God that he's given you and wait on God. But I'm going to be double-minded. I couldn't be God. Oh, but you don't know the, 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 how much money I need. Oh, but you don't know this is uncurable. Oh, but you don't know that this has never happened before. And, that's, and, that, and, and then you're double-minded, 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 and then what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. You see that? Let patience, hupomone, have her perfect work. Her perfect work. That you may be perfect. You know what the Greek word for perfect is? Teleos. You know what teleos means? It's done. It's the end. God wants to bring you from your trial and tribulations all the way to the end of deliverance and wholeness. But he's got to do it by patience. And whose job is it to bring you to, to, to deliver the wholeness and the, and the deliverance? It's God's job. Whose job is it for you to have the patience to get there? It's your job. Right? you got to work together. That you may have your perfect wholeness. Perfect. Tell us. And entire, entire means complete in all parts. Wanting nothing means left behind in nothing. We sang about being complete. It's completely, completely, completely complete. Understand? You can't get no more completer. That's what God says. I got this for you. I got this. Now I just need you to, come on, bear up under it. Bear up under it, and you'll see. I'll meet you here, and I'll show you a little bit. I'll meet you here, and I'll give you a little bit more strength and encouragement. I'll meet you here. I'm, and then before you know it, you're at the telios. You're at the end. And you know what lies at the end? 
wholeness and deliverance. Wholeness and deliverance. Listen, when we encounter trials and tribulations in life, you need to make a decision. How are you going to handle that challenge? Are you going to do it your way? Or are you going to do it God's way? And if you're going to do it God's way, you need to have patience. That's all that's to it. You may not like that. That may not be what you want to hear. Paul didn't want to hear that answer. Three times I besought the Lord, get rid of this thorn in the flesh. God says, nah, my grace is sufficient for thee. So you may not even hear the answer that you want to hear from God. But you know what you got to learn? Just like Jesus Christ learned? Obedience. Trust. Knowing that Father knows best. And just because you want it doesn't necessarily mean that's the best for your life. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. God wants you to have wholeness in all the areas of your life. But you're only going to get that wholeness if you patiently endure and wait on God. And stop trying to figure things out yourself. You're not that smart. Look at Psalm 37. A couple more verses here. We'll close. It's a wonderful place in life where you get to the place where you just give up and depend on God. That was Dr. Strange's problem. Wonderful surgeon. Did all these magnificent things. Full of himself. And he wasn't able to get to the place in life where he actually could understand things until he finally gave up on himself and decided, I am not as smart as I think I am. And then he learned some things. Psalm 37 verse 6 says, Rest in the Lord and wait, what? Patiently for <laughs> It's all. Take a nap. It's okay, everybody likes naps, right? <laughs> Rest in the Lord. Cratchit. <laughs> Take a nap, Cratchit. <laughs> and wait patiently for him. <laughs> Fret not thyself of him who prospers in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. What's I tell you? Don't worry about what's going on over there. Don't worry about it's not fair. Don't worry about they're getting away with murder. Don't worry about they're this and they're that and the other thing and you're the one that's taking all the... Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Don't fret about that. That's not your job. Remember I told you confusion happens when you don't understand your job and God's job. Whose job is that? Vengeance is what? Mine. Seth who? Okay, take your nose out of God's business and do your business. And your business is to wait what? Patiently. 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 And don't let the devil trick you and make you doubt and make you become double-minded. Because once you're double-minded, you're going to get what? Here's the, here's the Septuagint version. God's. You need to have hupomone. You need to have patience. And that will bring you to the finish line where God will meet you with open arms and you will be complete, lacking nothing. Psalm 40 verse 1 says, David, I patiently or I waited patiently for the Lord to help me and he turned to me and he heard my cry. But there was a little bit of waiting. Do you understand? It says that I waited patiently. Okay? And God heard him. And finally, Ephesians 6.13, the New International reads, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, and I will guarantee you, you will have several evil days in your life because the evil one is the God of this world. Okay? So that when the evil day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. That's what you do. You do your job, 
God will do his job. You stand. You bear up under the pressure. Keep your eyes on God. Trust in the Lord. He's going to bring you through this. I don't know when he's going to bring you through it, but I do know this, that if you start becoming double-minded, you start faltering in your faith, you ain't never going to get through it. You know what happens then? Then you start thinking about ways to get through it. Stop fighting. Why do you want to fight with God? Stay put. Let him bless you. And when you get to the end, that experience and confidence and trust is just going to grow in quantum leaps in your life. And you're going to know that you know that you know that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your God loves you, that your God is faithful, and that your God is someone that can be depended on because he is a patient and delivering God. Do you understand? That's faith. And it'll grow. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thanks that we can have patience and that we can stand up under these pressures because we trust you. We know that you're good to your word and you will pull through for us. We thank you, Father, for this teaching that would touch the hearts and lives of your people and that there's no problem in life that we are going through right now that doesn't have a sunshine at the end. All we need to do is stay put and weather the storm. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time to stay awake, watching o'er the sea, for we don't know what lies ahead. Tempest or storm, my duty is to warn, for safety for the lives of men. This video is a presentation of Chapter and Verse Ministry, a practical research and teaching ministry. Our website is cvm.church or you can call us at 610-650-8449. And thank you very much for your patronage.